which is sold in the grocery or the retail channel, such as hyper super groceries. So this is one of the complete spending of the food in the, in the region. So this is a portion of it, so which is approximately 25 billion market size within the six GCC markets which we have. As you know that the population is around 55 million, which is 1% of the world's population. However, in terms of the GDP contribution, it's still very much. Per capita consumption is around 25K, although it varies significantly from one market to another, such as Oman stands at 15K and UAE around $40,000. It is a very young population, as also been highlighted before, which more than 40% uh, of the population is less than 25 years of age, of course, offering opportunities for new products and the sweet taste to the consumers. Internet and the smart food penetration is very high in this region, and more than half of this region's population is consists of expatriates, mainly from the subcontinent region. From 2015 onwards, the region faced some headwinds. I will not go into the details that everyone is aware of the situation. However, due to these changing atmosphere into the market and the region, consumer sentiments are evolving and the way they are taking certain decisions have changed. So due to the VAT implementation started this year, 82% of the shoppers or consumers are feeling the pinch of the higher increase in prices. And as a result, they are uh, going for bargain hunting. So more and more consumers are looking for promotions as well as they are making plan uh, buying decisions. So as you can see, the consumers are rationalizing and optimizing their spend. So they are buying in bulk to get the price advantage. They are also switching brands. They are sticking to necessities rather than going into the luxuries. They are also switching stores for promotion. So flyers is taking a very important role and for other websites before. So they make a purchase, they see which brands offer them the better prices. So they prefer those. And as a result of these changes, what is happening, the growth is becoming a challenge in this region, which was not the case in the past. This region was always known to be growing high single digit, if not double digit. However, uh, we see now the market is more or less stable uh, in terms of the value growth, mainly driven by the Saudi and UAE, which are the two key markets for the region, contributing almost 80% of the spend. And VAT implementation at the start of the year is one of the key reasons the growth is in a positive note because of the price increase, whereas the rest of the GCC markets are in the negative zone. Having said that, the positive news is in the second half of last year, the market had started to show some positive signs. Where you can see in Q3 and Q4, the, the growth had started to come into the market. And as well as the consumer confidence is going up. The, the global average of consumer confidence is around 105, which means both Saudi and UAE is more optimistic and more confident of the economy compared to the global consumers. And at the same time, this is going up. Saudi has gone up almost 15 points in the start of the year and UAE around a couple of points. So this is a very good sign that consumers and the market is recovering and going into, uh, maybe it will not uh, move faster as it used to be in the past, but of course it's getting more mature and there are growth opportunities there. What we will do now is we will delve into confectionery market and see what is some of the uh, how the confectionery market is in the region looks like and what are the, some of the growth opportunities which different companies can tap into. So first of all, setting up the landscape, around 78% of the confectionery is chocolate based in this market and 22% is the non-chocolate based. Within the chocolate base, you have, of course, the wafers, the bite size, the tablets, all these chocolate products which is on offer. And then in non-chocolate base, you have 50% of which is chewing gums or bubble gums, as we call it. And the remaining are hard candies, soft candies, lollipops, uh, toffees, and all those kind of other sugar confectionaries which is available into the market. So that's how the market landscape is there. It's approximately 1.5 billion market, uh, but and it's declining by around 2%. However, the two key markets, which contribute 75%, Saudi and UAE, UAE is growing and the Saudi is declining less than the total GCC, so which is a positive sign. At the same time, what we have seen on the total level where the, the food basket is growing, similar is the case in those 
uh, construction categories, then the, in the second half of the last year, they are going much faster and on the path of recovery. So, considering that the market is declining or it's challenging, what are the, some of the opportunities which exist in the market which can help to drive growth to various brands? So, there are key areas where the companies can focus on, such as innovation trade promotion, pricing, and execution, which can help them to stay ahead of the curve and uh, compete in this market. So we start with innovation. We see that the confectionery market is declining. However, if you look at from the innovations, it's growing by 20%. So innovation or new products is driving the category, which shows that there is an opportunity to grow in this category with new products and the innovations. This is the case in both Saudi and the UAE market. What we also see that some of the top brands in the industry is facing the heat. So they are not gaining market shares. However, some of the smaller players, new entrants, new players are performing better than the market and they are gaining market shares. Again, it shows an opportunity for some of the new players and the new entrants to tap into this market. And also, since it's a quite a young region, 63% of the consumers are willing to try new products and one in two products have purchased a new product in their last purchase. This is from a Nielsen Shopper Research. So this shows there is an appetite for uh, new products offering. However, it's quite cluttered. Almost 18,000 new SQs in Saudi and close to 25,000 new SQs in UAE were launched in the last one year. So it means the market is very cluttered and it's very difficult to uh, succeed over here. So, and also not all new products meet the industry expectations. Only 2% meets 100% and 14% meets 50 to 75% of the industry expectations, which means the majority of the products fail to meet the plan which the company is plans to do. So why does innovation so often disappoint? The main reason is it's a weak proposition, it's a weak product, or even if the both has, are good enough, the activation or the execution is not done properly. And in this region, execution is one of the keys to succeed. We have seen cases that even not that even an average product has done quite well in this region if they, have, if they execute properly and play well with the consumer. So activation is one of the keys or execution in this market. So that's how your innovation or your new product or your new proposition can stand out when you're entering this market. Have a compelling proposition or a story which is uh, meeting an unmet uh, demand of the consumer. It should, should have a proper execution plan, how to execute well, and then to deploy it well with the help of technology and other measures. So this is how it will help you. This is just a couple of examples of, of a new innovation which has done well in the last uh, couple of years, basically. So KitKat, which is the all know come as a wafer brand, uh, which is quite famous for for decades, they came into these mini moments and encouraged various consumption behavior, which has helped to gain a portfolio and give a new tab for the big tech market. Similarly, Godiva, we all know today, is, is, is they have the flagship stores and they are known for uh, consumers buying the brands from their stores and they have tapped into the, the supermarket or the grocery channel, coming with the impulse product item at a price point, which is uh, 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 relative or close enough to the other brands into the market and help to gain market share and tap into the new section. The other area uh, where we can focus on is through promotions. Price sensitive. So if you see Saudi and the UAE are one of the two top price sensitive countries in the market in, in the world. So behind Australia only, UAE is second most price sensitive, which means that uh, price plays a very important role. So 1% price increase leads to an average 2.5% drop in value on overall level. Of course, this varies from brand to brand, category to category, but in overall level, they're very price sensitive. And then, especially uh, in the recent changes, this has been going, this has been increasing as well. And as a result, 50% of the total FMCG sales in the UAE is on promotions or on deals. And this is increasing as well versus last year. For chocolates, it's even higher. So 63% of the chocolates sold in UAE is on promotions. It could be promotions on, it could be different various kind of promotions into the market. So that's high. And on average, there is a 20% discount 
to the shoppers or to the consumers uh, uh, on an average and similar is prevalence in the chocolates category as well. So again, bargain hunting and the promotion is on the rise. And if you see that temporary price reduction, so direct cash in the pocket is gaining importance. So rather than having a free gifts or bundle packs, consumers are preferring that they get direct price offs, so they have savings directly into the pocket. This is also what we have noticed. How unfortunately, only 60% of the promotions, or sorry, only 40% of the promotions gives an incremental sales. So what does this mean? That of all the promotions which are done into the market, 40% of them are cannibalizing the existing sales, which, of, which would have anyways happened in a national promotion. So you're not getting any benefit out of it. So you're losing money onto the table. Then only 40% is getting the true incremental value. So which means that promotions which are companies are doing now are be, be, not benefiting them and having a hit on their margin, basically. Consumers are enjoying, but the companies are not making margins on it. And only 80, only 16% of the promotions are even breaking even. So how we consider breaking even? So promo efficiency means so a promotion which gets, gives at least 50% of incremental sales, we consider as an efficient promotion. So based on this criteria, only 16% of the promotions are getting are efficient and the remaining 84% are not. And what we see, what is the difference between these 16% versus the 84%? Is the 84% promotions, they are doing consistent promotions on regular basis. So they are always on promotion with at a certain, so at a 24%, 20% is an average discount. On month on month, they are consistently on promotion. So consumers consider them as a PAU price for them. Whereas the companies who are promoting less often, but with deeper discounts. So we have a targeted strategy, have a good promotion, which really offers benefit to the consumers. And it's done on certain uh, periodic periods, on certain occasion or certain times have really helped them. So these kind of promotions have really helped and helping the companies to make better margins and uh, having better success into the region. So that's one of the learnings which we have. Then the last one, we move into execute, that how execution is playing a role into this. Supermarkets in this region is the most important channel. With just 3% numeric distribution, which is close to 1,200 stores, you can tap into almost 60% of the trade within Saudi. In UAE, it's even higher. With just 750 stores, you can tap into 80% of the supermarket. So that's the priority for entrance into, into this region. However, you cannot ignore the traditional trade or the minis, the rest of the trade, which is close to 35%. Uh, or oh, sorry, 43%, especially in Saudi. So it's very important. However, the size of the trade, the number of stores to reach this 40% market is quite huge. 42,000 stores in Saudi in order to get into that. So that's a big ask, whether you want to do a direct distribution or through indirect distribution. So for this, the focus should be on the golden stores. So there are almost 8,000 stores out of the 42,000 stores in Saudi, which represents 50% of the confectionery sales. So after you tap into the supermarkets, the next area is to tap into the golden stores, which can give you the edge to the majority of the market. So that's how you should be focusing your execution strategy to enter into this market. On an average, so we see huge influx of SEUs. You go to a supermarket shelf, you see thousands and thousands of SEUs. However, only 9% of the SEUs or products SPU products in Saudi makes 80% of the total sales. And in UAE, it's 7% of the SPUs are making 80%. So although there are so many SPUs, there are a few selected SPUs which you should be focusing on from the assortment perspective, giving them a better space, executing it well, which really helps you to drive the sales into this category. And it's even lower in chocolates. So where the number was seven and nine on the average food basket, it's only 4% in the chocolates category. So 4% SEUs in the chocolates contributes 80% of the sales. So few selected brands or SEUs is dominating the market over here. And then there's a huge long tail, which is the rest of the small portion of only 20% of the market. So execution is the king in this market. You should have a right assortment, have the compelling story. You should focusing on the right source, 
supermarket golden source where you are and to you offer a better in-store experience which will help your brands to win and gain market shares even in this atmosphere. Just a very quick case study basically, this is just to show an example how a brand has helped to gain market share and grow in this environment. So if you see there was a brand A which had X market share and they were losing their market share in store X and store Y. If you look at the shares they were have on the shelf, it was a decent enough, but they were still losing shares. So what we saw that there were the, num the top SQs, as we see that the few handful of SQs drive the, the key sales were not properly available onto the shelf. So the key SQs are not there, but the others are there. So this share of facings or shelf is not helping you. Similarly, the SQs which has a higher contribution have less space given versus the SQs which is uh, which is the second SQ which has more space given. So you need to be very really sure that which are your key SEUs, your top proposition SEUs, and you should give a proper execution for those and focus on them to drive. And as a result, when this was fixed, we see in the three, four months going forward, the brand has shoot up and started to gain market share in those stores. So let's, so the, the key is that let's focus on few quality products rather than going for a huge rain, focus on your assortments, on similar set of SQs which offer a winning proposition and go with those products into the market which can help you to win. This was on the confectionery. On the couple of slides on the honey market. Now honey is a market which as Nielsen covers the retail section or the grocery part of the business, there is a huge section of honey which is sold in bulk outside retail such as institutions, specialized shops, horeca, which is something is needs and does not mention. So there's a very limited information available on this space. So the total package honey market in Saudi and UAE only is close to 100 million US dollars and it's declining by 5%. So there is a major chunk which sits outside this retail business, which is needs and not capturing, which is in the outside the grocery channel or it's sold in the bulk. So what we have capturing out of that, 78% is Saudi and 22% UAE, which is pretty much the same which we have seen into the other categories. And these are the, some of the top honey types which are in the market, such as the plain honey is close to 62% and the black forest, cedar. So these are the, some of the top uh, preference of honeys in the package industry which is sold over here basically. So these are the only couple of slides we have honey, there was not much there. And we have kept like five to 10 minutes for Q&A session in case anyone has any questions or want to refer to any specific slide, we are open for that.